Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk about mountain weather and uh, ski conditions here over the next five to seven days. I'll run us right into the weekend, and there's obviously a lot to talk about. And it's all being driven by the atmospheric river that uh, is, is nailing California right now. I pulled the, uh, the image this morning down at the base of a Mammoth Mountain. I think Mammoth's probably going to be the biggest winner, showing the very biggest totals out of all of this by the time we get into Friday. And you can see they've got the big front loader out there. And this was just the initial surge as this uh, river hit. Uh, we've still got more time on this. And in fact, I don't think it really tapers off until Friday morning across the, the Sierra. So got some big days ahead. And the, really the important implications of this are that it's going to drive the forecast because these pieces will break off. And they're going to follow the jet and the flow up to the Sun Valley, up into the Tetons. And then eventually some of these pieces, smaller pieces, will clip parts of the Wasatch and even Colorado down the road. So um, we'll definitely look at all of that. But let's get into the, uh, the radar and satellite here, the analysis. Um, so there is our big, deep low sitting off the coast right now. And uh, the rich, rich flow is just piling into uh, California right now. You can see there's also a cold front which helps to kind of focus the axis of this whole thing. But also take note, this is very important, of the little pieces breaking off and moving into the interior parts of Idaho and Utah and then up into the, the Wasatch, which I think this is going to end up being a very nice flow for those areas. But let me take you in just a little bit closer here towards uh, California and the crest of the Sierra and show you what this is looking like. You can see the rich flow just <laughs> absolutely cranking in. And, and it's, an, it's an orthogonal flow, so you've got this perpendicular flow hitting the the Sierra, the crest of the Sierra, and just being lifted. It's a perfect orographic situation, and that's why we're going to see just so much snow. And it's also a colder low, slightly colder than what we might typically see for the Sierra. So the ratios, the snow ratios, are going to be just a little bit higher than what we would typically see, and that's going to help crank out the big numbers. So part of the equation here is the jet, and look at this pink or red core of the jet sitting over, again, right at an angle, uh, nailing uh, right that, that perpendicular flow. Uh, so you're slamming that whole flow in against the Sierra, and then all that moisture, then pieces of it will be um, basically blown into the interior. Well, the future jet, by the time we get into Saturday morning, the low is right here sitting over Colorado. So it is delivering some of that snow, although much less, to parts of Colorado and to the interior. So we've got a good weekend full of some powder days here, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the interior as a result of this. So the future radar, what we do is we take that moisture, we move the low very slowly into the interior, but it's still snowing very hard. This is Thursday afternoon, still snowing hard across the, the Sierra. But notice where we're starting to see some of the, uh, the better accumulations as well work their way in through Sun Valley and then up into the, uh, the Tetons. And I would say one of the big question marks is the Wasatch. I know we're going to see snow in the Wasatch. I just don't know how much we're going to see. Is it scraps? Is it small pieces? Is it little chunks? I know as these flow inland, sometimes they're really hard to time depending on the exact orientation of the jet. I do think we're going to see snow in the Wasatch. I just don't have, I mean, it could be a foot by the time you know we get into the weekend. Um, I just don't know what that total is going to be yet, but I'll give you my best guess uh, on the map coming up. But as we work our way into Friday and even Saturday, you can see the low is now on the move and uh, it will be taking that snow into the interior. You can see the blue showing up all the way from uh, the Wasatch uh, up into the Tetons, and then eventually it will be Colorado's turn by the time we get into Friday night and into Saturday as well, that blue or the snow on the future radar. You can see it. Western and southwest Colorado will have the best shots at this. I don't think we're going to see huge totals here. I think three to eight inches will probably cover most of Colorado as that happens. And then the entire area, um, the entire area, the entire low pressure will be moving away, and that will effectively dry out the interior and the next low, and you can see it right there moving in finally to the Pacific Northwest for areas like Baker North and to Whistler. Those areas with that other low will start to benefit. But the numbers, as far as accumulation goes, by Thursday morning, most of the accumulation will continue across uh, the Sierra. Um, so. Again, moving the clock ahead, you can see the numbers in the Sierra. And then we start to see some of the accumulations across the Wasatch and the Tetons. And Sun Valley will do very well through the period. I think a couple of feet up there in Sun Valley between, you know, Thursday and Friday and the weekend. I think those areas, I think Sun Valley will have great skiing 
into the weekend. Uh, rolling into Friday morning, the accumulations uh, continue to tick up across the interior, but also back across uh, the top of the Sierra. I mean, look at those numbers through Squaw, but look at Mammoth. I mean, just absolutely getting nailed. And look at that flow rocking its way into uh, Jackson Hole and the Sun Valley area. I think the best powder days in, in Jackson Hole will be on Friday and also on Saturday and potentially on Sunday as well. And again, with less certainty, kind of uh, looking at the Wasatch down there, I know we're going to have snow, but it may be Friday into Saturday with some of the best numbers right there, and then into Saturday for Colorado. So let's look at those numbers as we roll into Saturday here on the clock. Watch the numbers start to come up. The Sierra will probably quit. We'll, we'll begin to just wind that snow down. And then Saturday, you can see the numbers ticking up into Colorado on the western and southwestern sides. And even the Wasatch numbers have come up a little bit more as well. Um, by the time we get into a Sunday, a lot of that has moved away. And the west will start to dry out um, as the low moves away and kind of affects the, uh, the Midwest. And we'll have reached the peak snow there across uh, the Sierra as well. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of the picture by Sunday morning. And I know I've talked about those grand totals in the Sierra a lot, but you can see 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 inches possible by Friday on those grand totals uh, from Heavenly Squaw, Sierra, Kirkwood, all the way down to Mammoth. So good skiing into the weekend. Uh, enjoy it. There's going to be some big days across the interior as well. And as always, thank you for tuning in here. I do appreciate it.